What's up guys, Matt Day here, and today we're gonna to be talking about pushing Ilford HP5 to 1600, which is two stops. Now before we jump into this video, I guess now would be the appropriate time to apologize because I upset quite a few people on the last episode, the what's in my bag video, and I upset them by talking about the cameras rather than just listing out the cameras that were in the bag. Um, I don't know what I was thinking, talking about cameras on a photography channel, that would be like talking about a car on a, uh, a car channel. So I don't know what I was thinking. Sorry about that. Uh, today we'll uh, be talking about photos though and the film that I was using and that's Ilford HP5. So what I'm going to do is just walk you guys through some photos here over the last couple of months and uh, you're going to see all kinds of different photos. I tried to grab a handful of things in different lighting conditions and stuff like that. That way you could kind of get an idea as to how the film was actually behaving in those situations. Um, now before we jump into it, I'll also talk about the developer. The majority of these photos, they were shot using Ilfotech HC. Um, you guys know I was using um, Kodak's developer HC 110. I was using that exclusively for uh, a little over two years and whenever I made the jump from Kodak film to Ilford film I thought I might as well make the full jump over to Ilford developer as well. And um, this actually wasn't the first Ilford developer I used. The first one I used was Ilfotech DDX. And uh, I have this right here, and I've literally used it one time. I developed three rolls in one big tank, and uh, I haven't used it since. Um, and I'll get into that here in a little bit. But the majority of the photos here, they were shot with HC. And this is basically the Ilford version of uh, HC 110. So that's probably why I like it so much, because it's just what I'm used to. Um, I honestly don't see any difference between this and Kodak HC 110, but I figure, uh, you know, if I'm going to continue to buy this stuff, I should be supporting Ilford because that's the whole reason I made the switch to Ilford Film, was just because I wanted to support their brand. Um, I like what they're doing for film, what they've always done for film, and uh, I just sort of lost that connection, I guess, with Kodak. But if you guys want to hear more about that whole transition, you can click the card up at the top of the screen. There's a whole video where I talk about that, so you can check that out if you're interested. But with that being said, we'll go ahead and jump into the video here itself. And the very first photo here, you can see my lovely wife, Molly. Uh, this was a photo of her I shot in the backyard. She was just laying there in the hammock. And you can see throughout this entire photo, I mean, from the really dark hair all the way to the white t-shirt, there's all kinds of tones in between here. Um, all different sorts of uh, tones of grays. Really, really good coverage. And that was one of the most surprising things to me was that I assumed in any kind of outdoor location, you know, whenever I'm shooting at 1600, it's going to be way too contrasty, you know, to be able to shoot uh Ilford pushed or HP5 pushed to 1600, but you'll be able to see throughout all these examples here that it holds up really, really well, even in high contrast situations. So uh, one thing I really like about it, and like I said, this is shot with Ilfotech HC, um, and it has the kind of uh, grain structure that I'm familiar with when developing with HC 110. Um, but it, it's great. Even pushed to 1600, yes, I'm definitely pulling out a lot of grain in this here. But, you know, that's just sort of a look I prefer. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about the grain whenever I get into the last few photos, which are the photos I shot with uh, or developed with Ilfotech DDX. But we'll get into that later. So the next photo here, uh, this is a photo of my brother with my dog Taker sitting on his lap. And this was a heavy backlit situation. Uh, we were inside their house. And you could see the big glass door right here and then the windows over here. I mean, there was really no light directly on him other than the window across the kitchen. And it still, I mean, it, as bright as this is and everything, even all the blacks like in his wheelchair here and his hair, uh, really, really good, you know, amount of tones in this photo. And we'll zoom in here and you can see that, yeah, we're definitely getting a lot of grain in here, but I really like that look. Um, I haven't actually developed, whoops, skipped ahead here. Um, I actually haven't developed, um, or I haven't shot the film pushed to 3200, which would be three stops. Uh, I do plan on doing that at some point, but here lately I've really just been sticking with 1600. That way I can just kind of get those exposures in my head. That way I don't have to rely on the meter or anything, and I've just been trying to keep it consistent. But as you can see, we're definitely getting more grain, but some people that bothers them. Me personally, I happen to love it. Um, another photo here, this is one with uh, Taker here perking up as soon as I said his name. Um, but you know, 
same kind of lighting situation. Yeah, it's heavily backlit and you are going to get more of that grain in the shadows whenever you, uh, especially if you don't expose it for the, the deepest of the shadows, you know, whenever you try and pull that up and post, you are going to just bring in even more grain. But honestly, this came out extremely well, way better than I was expecting. And, uh, while it is contrasty, which is what you, you know, should expect whenever you're pushing film two stops. But at the same time, I don't think it's too much. I think it's just the right amount where whenever I bring it into Lightroom, there's not a whole lot of adjustments I have to make because I normally would add contrast anyway. Um, but with this, you know, it kind of uh, takes care of that for me while bringing in a little more grain, which like I said, I'm always a big fan of. Um, this is another photo I shot during midday. Um, I mean, you can see here there's clouds back here. Uh, you know, it was, uh, I'm trying to think maybe about probably, probably about one to two o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, but I mean, you can see here where the clouds were over the fields, you know, you've got some really dark, dark tones down through here, but at the same time, you've got these highlights. I mean, you can still see the clouds right here in this area and it's, it's holding the detail extremely well. Um, you know, and like I said, for midday, I was really, really surprised to be able to get that kind of detail and, uh, you know, be able to still control that contrast and actually have information throughout the photo the entire time. Uh, once again, I jumped ahead here by accident. This is a photo of Taker here uh, looking out the back door or out the back window. Um, you know, and in this kind of situation, especially whenever I'm exposing for this area right here on his face where the light is, even back here in the shadows, I mean, it's it's very, very dark. Uh, you know, if I tried to pull out detail in the curtains back here, I would certainly be able to tell that this area was underexposed, but that's not what I was going for, you know? So I'm perfectly fine with areas like this going to, uh, you know, near complete black just because that's not what I was going for. You know, I was going to focus for his face right here, and I mean, it just came out great. And, uh, you know, especially for shooting it at 1600, um, you know, the negatives still, they come out really, really sharp. The grain isn't to the point where it just starts, you know, basically blocking things out and I'm starting to lose some of that, you know, crispiness to the photo. It still holds its sharpness really, really well. The grain isn't covering up that at all. So I was really happy about that. Um, let's see, this is a photo here of my dad out working. For those of you guys who don't know, um, aside from my photography job, I also work for my dad in the mornings. And what we do is we go out to cemeteries and we engrave tombstones. So, uh, it's not the most common job, but you know, I can't can't complain. Uh, my dad and I were basically the same person. I always have a good time hanging out with him. He's hilarious. And, uh, you know, I'm fortunate enough that I get to spend that amount of time with my dad on a regular basis, but it's fun. We get to work outside. Um, it's just me and him. We're the only people that work in his business. So it's, it's really, really nice. But anytime we're out working, you know, we travel all over the Southern Southwestern area of Ohio. And I always have my camera bag with me just because, you know, um, well, yeah, I just, I always like taking photos. So I end up taking a lot of photos, uh, while we're out working and I've thought about doing some kind of a personal project with this, uh, whether it be just a book, uh, just something I do for myself. I mean, there's already, you know, hundreds and hundreds of photos I've made over the years working with my dad. But, you know, here lately, I've really been spending a lot more time focusing on it and trying to document even the tiniest little details while we're out working. So, um, but you can see here another midday shot, but still uh, holds the detail really, really well. Uh, the white van right here to the sky and even the mid-tones in between, like the grass out here and where my dad's out here working, uh, holds up really, really well. This is actually a photo of my dad sandblasting one of the stones. So you can see the sand here, uh, as he's sandblasting, it's bright white. And I mean, the sun was coming down right over top of him. You can see these highlights here from uh, where the sun was coming down right above where he was sitting. And still, it holds the detail really well. The sky isn't completely washed out. The white van holds detail. Uh, it's it's really, really surprising. You know, like I said, I keep repeating myself, but it, it's surprising in midday that I was able to shoot at F-16. And uh, a lot of these photos I was shooting with the FM2. So with that, with the shutter speed of going up to one four thousandth of a second, I was isn't stuck with shooting every single photo at f16 or f22 uh, this is another photo here you can see in this photo i was shooting with the fm2 and this is actually with that 35 millimeter f2 lens that i uh, talked about in the previous episode and uh, 35 millimeter focal length it's by far my favorite focal length whenever i'm shooting this kind of stuff uh, it just it works but you can see here uh you know 1600 midday but focusing up close like this i'm still being able to get a good amount of separation with you know 
the depth of field from back here up to where I'm focusing. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's still, you know, it's, it's very usable to be able to shoot 1600 midday, something I was really surprised about. But like I said, I've been shooting it this way for probably a couple of months now, at least. And, uh, I absolutely love it. Um, this here is a photo of my dad. Uh, anybody that knows my dad, anytime you see him, unless he's in a store or, uh, you know, somewhere where he can't, he's always has his pipe in his mouth, um, which is tobacco, just so you guys know. Uh, but yeah, this photo of my dad shortly after, you know, he, uh, told me to put the camera away because he absolutely loves it when I take his photo, but shooting this from inside the van, uh, this is the kind of stuff, especially that it comes in handy when shooting at 1600, because, you know, in the van here, it's especially dark when you're comparing it to, uh, you know, the bright sun outside of the van. So being able to uh, have a couple extra stops there, it just helps even more, you know, whenever you're in any kind of situation like this. So, uh, yeah, I have been showing you all kinds of photos from out in the midday sun shooting at 1600, but here's a really good example of shooting, you know, indoors, which you can see it's still light out. This is a big window here at my parents' kitchen and, uh, taker, he's always sitting up here on the couch, looking out this window. That's basically just off uh, to my right. But I shot this with my M6 and I was shooting the Voigtlander 35 millimeter F1.4. And this was just kind of me testing the lens out because it was new. And, uh, I shot this at 1.4 at probably a thousandth of a second because, uh, he was by the window. And even though it is sort of a, uh, a low light situation, um, compared to what we were just talking about, at least, you know, I, I'm still shooting at one thousandth of a second. Whereas if I wasn't, I'd be down at one two fiftieth of a second, which is two stops uh, below, you know, if I was shooting at 400 ISO. But still, you can see here, I mean, great detail, even in the highlights areas in, this, in the ceiling. Obviously, with the lights and the windows, that's going to blow out because I'm exposing for such a darker subject like where he is. Um, but, you know, in the couch here, we've got these gray tones and the highlights and everything on the leather couch um, through Taker. You know, he's a, a fawn kind of color. So got a little bit of a white chest here. But, I mean, really, really good, uh, subtle, you know, tones going throughout the entire image. And uh, this was probably one of the first images from uh, developing that I really stood out to me about that lens just in general, which this video isn't about that, but Hey, I'm going to talk about it. I like this lens a lot. Um, it's <laughs> just another one taker kind of giving me the eye telling me to, uh, basically knock it off. Um, this photo here, uh, my mom was in the kitchen cooking and, uh, there was some smoke coming through and the light was just pouring through the uh, front door. So I was just taking photos of that, but still a really, really high contrast su uh, subject. You know, we've got all of this light coming through here. And while obviously all of this area is going to be blowing or it's going to be complete black because, you know, I was mainly exposing to, uh, kind of get those light rays coming through there. Still surprising over here by their mantle where you can make out, um, you know, some of the brick here and even on the walls. Uh, I was expecting pretty much everything to be black whenever I shot this photo, but it ended up working out. Uh, this here is a photo of my good friend Marcus. Uh, a few days ago, I shot a music video for his band, and uh, in between, you know, basically a break where we were waiting for our lunch to get there, uh, we just kind of sat down, and I got out my M6 and was just shooting some kind of candid photos of everybody hanging out. And uh, I really liked this one. Over to my right, there was an LED light uh, that I was using that I use for the show here, and I'm also using it in the music video. But I had it just off to the right a little bit, so that was kind of acting as the light on him. And then behind him, you know, he was kind of separated by this, uh, this window in this old barn. And, uh, I just really like the way this turned out, you know, uh, in, in my opinion, it seems like it might be a tiny bit underexposed, which is probably because, you know, I was trying to read more for, uh, this light here I wasn't trying to, but accidentally was reading in, you know, some of where this light was here and the white shirt, everything kind of in the center of the photo is a lot lighter. So when you look up here, you can see, um, you know, it's starting to get a little muddy in the, uh, in the dark shadow areas, but still really fine with the photo in general. Um, I'm not too picky about stuff like that. It, if it works, it works. And in this case, I don't mind that one bit. Um, this here is a photo with, which doesn't seem as underexposed as the previous photo here, but this is my friend, Jesse. He's the drummer for the band. And, uh, he was standing basically right next to the led light there. And, you know, I just happened to stand up and shoot a photo here just because I like the way the light was falling on him. And obviously a really, really contrast scene because, you know, the light was so close to him and with his, you know, light skin and all of these dark areas in the background, uh, really, really contrasty scene, but still keeping good detail in the uh, right side of his face where we've got kind of this almost Rembrandt type look, which it isn't technically Rembrandt, but you know, 
you've got this little bit of light over here on his right cheek and uh, it's holding the detail really well and you can kind of see a light rim light right over here on his side and that's just coming from uh, the, the window back there behind him but we'll go on here and this is just a photo of his uh, drum kit here which this one kind of like the photo before might be you know half a stop or so underexposed but it works for me I really like just the light kind of bouncing off of uh, the symbols here and this photo here, um, this is a pretty high contrast scene, even though it was shot indoors. Um, it's just my boots sitting on a stool, and it was right in the uh, window light. But, um, you know, I, I like the photo because it does have really good detail, even in the highlights down here on the wooden floor, and even in the boots themselves, held up much better than I was expecting, and the dark shadows here. Um, another photo with just the boots up against the wall, obviously high contrast. You've got your black stool here with your white wall and the boots here in between in sort of the mid-tones. But um, yeah, it, 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 it holds the detail much better than I was expecting. Now this is a photo here shot outdoors, and uh, I do have uh, a lot of grain in here. But, you know, in, in a solid subject like this, you can really see it. That's what I'm trying to say. But um, I prefer the look. I really, really enjoy it. And uh, shooting at midday, you know, even with kind of the highlights down here, real low in the sky and even the the darker areas of up top uh held up really nice and this is a really really contrasty scene we've got jesse in a black t-shirt we've got the white sky behind him uh, i mean the white you know the light hitting his face i mean it's directly on his face you can see both of our shadows right over here uh but it's still it's you know it's very contrasty i shot this at f16 at one one thousandth of a second and uh whoops and uh, still, it, it held the detail even back here in the shadows where the house is, you know, uh, the roof and all that held up really, really well. Um, this is Jesse's dog, Apollo, his uh, St. Bernard. Apollo is a big, big beast, uh, sweetest dog ever. Um, but, you know, he's got this this dark face right over here with this kind of white patch right down the middle, all white fur, and this was shot, uh, he, it was in the shade, but at the same time, you know, I was shooting outdoors and it was pushed two stops, so really adding the contrast there, but still held the detail really, really well, much more than I expected. So uh, that was really nice. Now, this photo here, this wasn't developed with Ilphatech HC. This was developed with DDX. And what I found from DDX was that it gave a much flatter negative, And at the same time, it's really, really fine grain. Now, some people may really, really prefer this. You know, they would think, great, that doesn't, uh, you know, blow out my highlights or anything, and the grain isn't as noticeable, and I can still push it to 1600, getting that extra speed without adding in all that grain. Now, like I said, some people might love that. I personally don't really like the look that I got from DDX just because, you know, uh, I like that extra grain. I like that extra contrast, and uh, it just gives me more work to do in post. And even when I did do work in post, it still didn't really give me the contrast that I was hoping for. I mean, I really boosted the contrast on this photo, and yeah, it's fairly contrasty. You know, you've got your, uh, your blacks down here and your highlights up here, but still... Uh, Still seems pretty flat to me. Uh, this is a photo of Molly inside of her parents' house. Another, you know, low light kind of situation. The only light was basically from the uh, light above the sink, I think, over to my left. And then you've got these uh, two lights back here. I understand why DDX has its place, you know. I know a lot of photographers would really like to get the least amount of grain possible. It's just not the look I prefer, you know. I love shooting black and white film because the, of those kind of characteristics that I can get from it. It's just not really my taste. Uh, the next photo here, this is Chloe. This is Molly's mom's dog, and uh, she's a sweetheart. But yeah, a black dog and... And a white carpet and I'm still getting incredible detail all throughout the entire photo uh, but you know it's just that really really small grain um, if you can even find it in the photo I mean it's pretty hard to see uh, it's extremely extremely fine grained and uh, still even in, in a contrasty scene this was probably the most contrast I got out of any of my DDX negatives that I had um, which is fine I, I am actually happy with this photo I do like the way it came out but I'm not getting that look consistently that I, you know, would normally get, like if I were developing an uh, HC, you know, so that's what I've been doing. Uh, last photo here, another photo, uh, you know, this is Rusi on my dad's lap here, and uh, another, you know, low light situation, you would expect more uh, grain and contrast out of this, but really, really fine stuff, and like I said, this isn't me saying that, you know, DDX sucks because it doesn't give me enough grain. That's not it at all. You know, some people prefer more grain, some people prefer less. Um, I'm not in the boat where I love 
as you know all of the grain possible you know there's definitely a limit where i'm like okay that's that's you know too much but you know this is just uh this is just my preference you know so some people will love ddx some people will rather prefer hc uh, and there's all kinds of other developers from ilford so uh you know this is just my take on the two developers really um and more so this is my take on hp5 at 1600 you know i definitely think i could push it more than that and i probably will at some point but like i said i've just been shooting this at 1600 because I want to keep things simple, uh, keep things consistent, you know. The more I shoot at one speed in the same kind of film, the more I know exactly what my exposures are going to be in any kind of situation. And even if you are used to shooting it at 400, all you have to do is increase it by two stops in your head. But, you know, it's just another one of those mental things. Once you get it in your head, you don't even have to think about it. So this is just my take on it. You know, you guys were wanting to hear about uh, HP5 at 1600. So this is what I wanted to do, just kind of show you guys some different examples different lighting conditions, stuff like that. So I hope it was helpful for you guys. Um, if you guys did like this kind of video, please click the like button to let me know. Um, you know, if you want me to do more videos like this, please let me know because it's uh, it's a different kind of video. You know, I could pick a topic and try to get, you know, an idea across and try to condense it down and, you know, come up with an idea of how I want to get that message across beforehand. But with this, it's, uh, it's a free-for-all, you know. I kind of just sit down and I just talk and uh, get my thoughts out as, uh, as long as it takes. So if you guys like the video and you want to see more stuff like this, please like the video and let me know in the comments what more you would like to see. You know, if you'd like to see more videos like this where I kind of share some work and talk about each individual uh, photo as it comes or, you know, anything like that, let me know. And if you guys are upset that I'm talking about film on a film photography-based channel, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sure I'll get some sort of comments from that. But, you know, what can you do? Uh, thank you guys for all the support, though. I really appreciate it. You know, if any of you guys out there, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do that because we're just about to 10,000, which is absolutely mind-blowing for me. Um, the channel is almost a year old, and I was not expecting anything like this, you know. I started out doing it just because there weren't any other videos that I really liked on specific film cameras that I had, um, and I just thought maybe more people would enjoy those, and it's slowly grown from that to more videos like this, breaking outside of just film. Uh, it's It's been great, so it's really cool way more response than I was ever expecting, but I'm running with it. You know, I'm enjoying this a lot. I've met a lot of really cool people through this channel. Uh, a lot of you guys who are regularly commenting and emailing me absolutely love that. So please keep up the support because uh, that makes all of this worth it. So thank you guys for everything, but that's all. So I'll see you next time.